Hello everyone, my name is Cap and welcome back to the channel another 7 days to die video. Now this is all done in Alpha 16 B129. I've had a lot of people ask in previous videos so I want to make sure I put this out there and this is done on PC, it's not available on console. Okay, once you have your house fortified, like last one I showed you how I did all the internal lights here, you want to be able to protect your yard. I mean, if you got a nice manicured grass like this, you don't want things trampling over it and messing up your grass. So you can set up a little bit of a defense system here. And so what I have is I have an electric fence run all the way around my yard, set up with barbed wire on top of it, and a trip wire on the other side of it, set up to these trash can lights, these mobile spotlights here, and a speaker system here. So if anything wanders in, it won't be able to just walk into my yard. It'll make a whole bunch of noise, it'll let me know what's there, it'll light up the yard in the dark, and it'll do a little bit of damage. Here, let me show you. Okay, so we got a zombie over here, he shows up get his attention so he walks over here you can see what he does now there are a couple things to keep in mind with this system here see lights up nicely siren goes on so let lets me know in the house things are going on so he get trapped in the barbed wire fence can't really go anywhere and as it gets close enough he'll start getting electrocuted and this will do quite a bit of damage and eventually it'll make him fall into the first level of death where he falls down and starts crawling and then it'll go ahead and electrocute him and finish him off now, while this is a really useful system to be able to keep zombies out and at least notify you if they're coming into your general property here, this is not the most robust system. That'll come a little bit later when we set up a lot more traps, which we can do in another video. But for this one, you can see that it did a decent amount of damage. Now, the only thing we'll have to do is just make sure that he didn't actually damage any of the barbed wire, which he did. A little bit of wood and we can repair that, no big deal. But that's all there is to this. It's really quite simple. And I'll show you how I actually built this in just a second. But a couple things to keep in mind. This won't do a whole lot against the feral hordes that run in. It'll slow them down a little bit. But they will definitely wipe this out. This is just to keep out the normal day-to-day -day zombies. So they don't come staggering into your house while you're in the middle of walking around doing some repairs and stuff. So let me get to showing you how I actually did this. So I'm setting this up in my backyard. The same way I am doing the front yard. So what I did was kind of like I did in the house. I put a solar bank up on top of the roof. And I ran it into a battery bank from there I ran it into a switch and from the switch I have it going into relay up to the corner of the house and from the corner of the house runs over to this relay and from here is where I'm going to be putting in the electric fences now one of the things I would recommend doing is to go with the shovel and dig a small hole and the reason why is because when you put it in the hole it's now ground level if you just put it up on the ground level without being inside a hole then what it'll end up doing is it'll be height of your face basically so anything crawling or ducking will go right underneath it but if you dig one deep hole with a shovel and you put your fence in there then when they walk up next to it it's knee high and so they'll always run into it so what i did was i just went through and dug holes about every 10 12 spots all the way around the fence and i'm going to go through and put these posts in there so then what i'll do is i'll just come up to the actual relay and connect it to the fence and then connect it from here over to this one. And then I'll do that all the way around. And the next thing I'm going to do is with the barbed wire here. Now the barbed wire you can actually place inside the wire. You can see that they overlap with each other here. So you can place it right on top of the wire itself. The wire will go underneath it. Makes it really easy to be able to line up your entire base. And so that the line and the barbed wire are all in the exact same spot. So when the zombie runs into it, they get stuck in the trap. And you can keep them in spot while they're getting electrocuted. Now there is one other way you can do this. You can put the barbed wire behind the electric fence. And that way when they run into the electric fence line, they will run into the barbed wire. And it will slow them down and stop them and electrocute them. But I like to have it just over the top of it here. Just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. Now the next thing I set up was the motion sensors. Is that these stick looking things here and these don't have to be very close to each other they can stretch out quite a way so what I did was I stretched them out about that far away from each other then move down a little bit more and put another one here like that and then all I would have to do is just connect them to the same power source up here because it doesn't have to go in any kind of sequence for it to work out see the power can go to both of these and they will power individually and then of course to go from this one over to this one now one of the things you want to do is once it actually has power here, what you want to do is go into this where you can change it and you want to set it to whatever duration you want to. I set it on 3 seconds. Power delay, I put it as an instance. That way as soon as they touch it, it goes off. And then the power duration, I set it to go for 3 seconds. So I'll make the siren go off for 3 seconds. But you can make it go off for as long as you want to. If you leave it on just instant, which is the default, the trigger here, then as soon as they run over the line, it'll sound the alarm, but as soon as they step off of it, it goes off. So it just kind of like that rant, and then it's done. 
So that's all you have to do with this. Now the next thing I did was to set up these trash can lights, these mobile spotlights, and you can put these pretty much anywhere, but one of the nicest things about them is that once they're actually powered, you can hook these up and change the directions of them. So let's see, I'll set one off. We'll do this one facing that way. And then we'll just wire it in with this trip wire down here. And now it's wired in. Now once you actually have power going to it, you'll see that it actually has power. If you hold down the interact button and go down to this block aim command, you can click up here in the targeting system and you can actually move the direction the light's facing just like you can with the turrets, which makes it really easy to do. So you can see me down there. So I would, instead of just having to point straight out, you can kind of point it down a little bit and that way you can make it aim the light exactly where you want to. And now when you back back out of it, you can see that it's kind of angled down. And so when this goes off, it'll light up this general area down here instead of just lighting up straight ahead. And then I just did that all the way through. And of course you do the same thing with the speaker. You just plug it into the exact same chain all the way around the house and you're good to go with it. And so now when something walks over this, it'll trigger the light, trigger the alarm. They walk into the next line. But do be careful when you're doing this. I usually leave everything turned off until I'm ready to start testing it because if you walk into this, you'll start taking trap damage and it'll electrocute the crap out of you and it can possibly kill you. Or if not, do a whole lot of damage to you. But that's really all I did, and I just did that all the way around, which I'm going to continue doing this, but I don't want the entire video to be super long. So I'll just run back around to the start so you can see what it kind of looks like, finished product. So you got the fence going all the way around, the motion sensor goes up, I got another tripwire on the garage door, it goes up to the speaker, goes off to the lights, and each one of the, spe uh, the trash can lights is hooked just in a sequence all the way around from the same speaker it's just one long line it starts up over there goes around in a circle goes up and then back around the house so it's all one consecutive light here and i'll show you what it looks like at nighttime okay now that it's pretty dark out here see if you trip over it now see it does a pretty decent job of lighting up the area i need to go through and kind of redirect a few of the lights to light up a little bit more but it does a pretty good job of lighting up the area if somebody happens to trip over this fence here. And so that's it. I'm going to wrap up the video there. Um, hopefully this wasn't really confusing as to how I went about doing this, but it's pretty useful. And on the vi next video, what I'm going to do is go through and start setting up a lot of traps. We'll set up a few turrets so that, you know, when things actually start showing up here, we have a little bit more defense. This is kind of just an alert system to slow them down and make sure you know that they're coming. All these sirens you can hear from a ways away. So if you have any questions, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll answer it as best I can. Um, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Thank you guys for your time. You have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. This video is brought to you by TubeBuddy. If you're a content creator on YouTube, I highly recommend this tool. TubeBuddy is a free browser plugin that works directly with your YouTube page so you don't even have to leave your channel dashboard to use it and will completely transform how you manage your channel such as tag rankings to see where your tags rank, and even suggest new ones to improve search results. Use a social monitor to see who's sharing your videos, with advanced scheduling tools, thumbnail generator, and even bulk editing options for cards, annotations, end cards, and video descriptions, you can make changes to your entire video library with a simple few clicks. So if you run a YouTube channel, you should definitely install it and see what it can do for your channel. Go to tubebuddy.com cat0 to install it for free today.